Well, good afternoon. I'm Mayor Tom Barrett, and I want to welcome you all here this afternoon. As we begin 2019, uh, we are well aware of the challenges and the opportunities that our city of Milwaukee faces. And at the top of that list for all of us, all the people standing behind me, of course, is public safety. And we're here today because we think it's important um, for Chief Morales to talk about the challenges that he has faced in his first year in office and the opportunity, opportunities as well as challenges that he faces as we head into 2019. But as we look back at 2018, I want to thank Chief Morales, his staff, our other law enforcement partners, our community partners, our friends at the Milwaukee Fire Department, at the Office of Violence Prevention, um, but most of all, our community members who have stepped forward to make our city a safer city. Chief Morales will go over some of the statistics um, that are heartening, but I think to a person we all agree um, that there is more work that needs to be done. There's more work that needs to be done to make this a safer city. There's more work that needs to be done to make this a city where law enforcement and the citizens can work together to achieve our mutual goals of safety and respect. But I think that Chief Morales has certainly hit the ground running. And you'll hear a little bit about some of the challenges that he encountered and the ways that he's addressed those challenges in a way that I think we can all be proud of. So I am pleased um, to have spent the last 11 months working with Chief Morales, and I look forward to working with him for a long period in the future. Please join me in welcoming Chief Morales. Chief. Thank you. Mayor. I first want to start off by thanking uh, several people. The, the people that you see here in the backdrop are what helped make this happen in the year. It's not a one-person team. And in this uh, speech that you're going to hear, you, you'll hear a lot of eyes but that's teamwork, that's, there should be a lot of we's. I'm gonna start off by thanking Regina Howard who helped me prepare for this, uh, the data that I'm gonna share with you. Director Howard is in the background, but she did an awesome amount of work in keeping us focused in 2018, and she will continue in 2019 and, and moving forward at helping us really dissect crime, dissect the data, and really show us how uh, to move forward uh, with our strategies. I also want to thank the mayor for his continued support of the Milwaukee Police Department. And I want to thank our system partners that are here today, uh, who should be present as uh, Deputy Chief Sheriff Danita Ball, Marquette University Police Chief Edith Hudson, UWM Police Chief Joseph Lemire, District Attorney John Chisholm, uh, McLea President Steve Anderson of Oak Creek, and Deputy Chief Mike Blackwell of the Milwaukee Fire Par Department. And now when you hear me say system partners, these are the system partners that I often refer to when we talk about working together as a team. I was appointed a chief of police for the city of Milwaukee on February 16th of 2018. As a native of Milwaukee and a 25 year veteran of the Milwaukee Police Department, I remained humbled and grateful for the opportunity to be your chief. I also know that we're facing many challenges. When my administration began, we were already dealing with an ACLU lawsuit a high profile tasting incident, and a spike in violent crime. During the first two months of 2018, the South Side District 2 was already up over 100% in homicides. District 3 was up over 100% in non fatal shootings, and we were up 44% overall, citywide that is, in carjackings. At the time, I had a skeleton executive team with numerous vacancies to fill. We had our work cut out for us. It was time for organizational change, so I reallocated 100 officers to the patrol uh, duties. They work out on the street. I created our shoot review model, where we partner with other law enforcement agencies, state and federal prosecutors, and Department of Corrections to review the individuals involved in homicides and non fatal shootings to ensure successful apprehension and prosecution of offenders while also focusing on prevention and intervention strategies. We also joined the Suburban Violent Crime Task Force. I also engaged in a multi-pronged reckless driving initiative, including creating a reckless driving task force, adding speed boards throughout the city, implementing a marketing campaign, and participating in an enforcement mission with the Sheriff's Department and the State Patrol, known as the Reckless Driving Reduction Initiative. I created our Special Investigations Division to focus on fugitive apprehension, executing search warrants, and conducting specialized investigations 
on gun and drug violence. At the district level, I gave our captains autonomy to focus on issues and develop solutions unique to their neighborhoods, including a targeted focus on carjackings. Our officers engaged in exciting new partnerships with neighbors, community organizations, and faith-based organizations to develop synergies that served as a force multipliers in reducing crime and improving police community relationships. I promise you transparency. And starting in October, I instituted a policy that will provide community briefings to show the public relevant body-worn camera video and other evidence for officers involved in shootings within 45 days of the incident and before any charges decisions have been made. Since then, we have released three community videos. Together, in partnership with our community, law enforcement and government partners, we have seen a marked decrease in crime this past year. Our homicides have decreased 16 percent from 119 in 2017 to 100 in 2018 and nearly 30 percent from 142 homicides in 2016. Our non-fatal shootings have dropped 15 percent from 558 in 2017 to 475 in 2018 and our first time below 500 non-fatal shootings in the last eight years. We received 2,100 less shots fired alerts in shot spotter areas. That's a 24 percent decrease. After being up double digits in carjackings through the spring, we finished the year with a 7 percent decrease from 2017. Our joint reckless driving reduction initiative re resulted in 3,300 traffic citations. Our non-pursuits are down 67 percent. Since its inception in March 2018, our Special Investigations Division has arrested 761 adults, executed 109 search warrants, and seized over $300,000 related to drug activity. It has also recovered over 6,000 grams of heroin, over 1,100 grams of crack cocaine, and over 300 grams of fentanyl. These arrests have led to 357 individuals being criminally charged. Milwaukee is a safer city today than it was at this time last year. And in 2018, we recovered 141 more guns than last year, and the 2,400 evidence guns were recovered were 70 more than the total amount of guns we recovered in all of 2016. While I'm proud of these accomplishments, it is not lost on me that many of these numbers represent not just victims, but also family members, friends, and loved ones of victims who will forever be impacted by these crimes. No homicide or non-fatal shooting or reckless driving accident or drug dealing is acceptable. We understand that. While I remain data-driven, the Milwaukee Police Department is not in the business of simply reducing crime numbers. We are in the business of improving your public safety, protecting your children and families, and investing, investigating crimes that bring justice to you and your loved ones. To many department members within the, uh, departments within the city, county, state, and federal government, that play a major role in limiting crime, thank you. To the countless nonprofit, for profits and religious organizations that support a safer Milwaukee directly or indirectly, thank you. To my officers, you are living, breathing heroes that risk your lives every day for a greater city, thank you. Finally, we cannot do this alone. We are in this together and I need your help city of Milwaukee. In 2019, I intend to stress our community partnerships as a top priority, particularly in neighborhoods that have a disproportionate amount of crime. For example, citywide, we have a homicide rate of 17 per 100,000. Yet in neighborhoods like Harambe, there's a homicide rate of 85 per 100,000. In Arlington Heights, there is a homicide rate of 125 per 100,000. In Garden Homes, there's a homicide rate of 209 per 100,000, over 12 times higher than the city average. We cannot help these neighborhoods without your support, the city of Milwaukee. Education levels, poverty, drug addiction, job opportunity, mental health, 
and available housing are some of the many factors that directly affect crime, but are firmly outside the purview of police. I ask each and every one of you to take ownership in making Milwaukee a safer city. I am confident that together we'll make 200, 2019 even safer than 2018. We are your police department and I am your chief. I want the, the Lord to bless you and I want to wish you a happy new year and thank you very much.